Have you ever wondered who can call themselves a dog trainer and charge for their services? The answer might surprise you. Anybody at all. In the U.S. and actually in most countries, dog training is not regulated. There are no minimum education requirements, no licenses, and no standards of care. So then what can a dog trainer do to your dog? Pretty much anything. And get this, they not only can do anything, they don't have to tell you in a clear way what they're going to do, what side effects it may have, and whether there are alternatives. Let's talk about this absence of transparency in dog training. Transparency is important. We require manufacturers of stuff like peanut butter to list the ingredients on the label in order of weight. You may not care what's in the jar, but if you do, you get to know what it is. Peanut butter makers can't make supernatural claims about ingredients. Similarly, veterinarians must explain things to clients in clear, accurate language. A veterinarian who made stuff up, however impressive it sounded, would lose her license. But this is exactly what happens in dog training. Trainers can make any claim about what they're doing, how it works, and whether it's harmful, and can do so in nutty, non-concrete language. They might not disclose anything about the physical nuts and bolts of what's going to actually happen to your dog. And here's the thing. All training and behavior modification depends on motivation, and all dog trainers use some variation of the carrot, the stick, or both. So make sure you find out what's in the jar, what's actually going to happen to your dog. Find out if they plan to use some sort of special collar that's designed to choke him, dig pins into his neck, or deliver electric shocks to his neck. Or whether he might be assaulted in some manner, hit, kicked, pinned to the ground, or something else. Exactly how the tool works should be disclosed to you in a concrete manner. This is the transparency equivalent of the list of ingredients on the jar. Note that these organizations have all strongly cautioned against the use of pain and fear in training, and an ever-increasing body of scientific evidence has concluded that the use of pain and fear in training is unsafe, side-effect-laden, and inhumane. So insist on clear information from anyone calling themselves a dog trainer. Find out if there are alternatives that are safer and carry fewer side effects. And don't settle for gobbledygook explanations. Find out exactly what's going to happen to your dog. If a trainer doesn't make this clear right off the bat, ask these questions. What exactly will happen to my dog when she gets it right? What exactly will happen to her when she gets it wrong? Are there any less invasive alternatives to what you propose? If you don't get clear, concrete answers, or you feel at all uncomfortable, keep shopping. For trainers trained in least invasive, evidence-based practices and who must adhere to a code of conduct that includes transparency, consider an academy graduate. And always insist on full disclosure from any trainer.